Welcome to today's podcast. We have Rebecca Black, psychologist, here with us, and we are talking about birth trauma. Hi, I'm Karen, the founder of Pregactive, and through this Pregactive podcast, I'm going to help you to feel empowered, informed, and confident through your pregnancy and motherhood journey as we talk all things health, mind, and fitness. So thank you so much for coming on this podcast today with us, Beck. Uh, we have previous podcasts. Make sure you go back and check those out with Beck into who she is and what she does uh, because you do so much work with pregnant women and postpartum. And today we are talking about birth trauma. So could you give us a bit of a, a rundown just as to what is birth trauma? Yeah, thanks for having me, Kez. I think this is such an important topic because one in three women describe their birth as traumatic. And I think often when we hear the term birth trauma, we assume that it might be an emergency C-section or, um, you know, something has gone wrong in birth. But really what we know about birth trauma is it's much more about how, how a woman feels through her labor and birth experience. So Often women who describe their birth as traumatic talk about feeling helpless, feeling like they weren't supported or listened to or heard during their labor and birth, feeling like um, they didn't give consent to interventions, that um, things were out of their control and they might have even felt afraid or scared or fearful of for their well-being or their safety or their baby's safety. So um, it's not so much about how your birth unfolds or, or how you birth your baby, but more about how you feel through the process. So I've worked with women who you know, might on paper have very similar birth experiences, but one woman felt empowered, informed, heard, supported, um, nurtured through the experience. And another woman might feel like she was dismissed and invalidated and um, not supported with her birth wishes. And that's the woman that would, would likely feel quite traumatized um, by the experience. Those words are so powerful. Uh, you know, unheard, dismissed, mm. and it's such a, a, a common, as you said, experience for women and that women often do feel like that the healthcare professionals are the experts mm. and they deal with this sort of stuff every day. So the way that they spoke to me or what happened must just be a normal process. Mm. And it made me, as the woman, potentially feel frightened, scared, angry, whatever the feeling may be, mm. and that she invalidates her own feeling because she just feels like that was just part of the whole process. And it definitely doesn't have to be this way. Mm. But what we really want to cover here today is that if it has been that way for a woman, how are some ways that we can validate her and have her feel heard and not feel dismissed when we as a friend or a family member go to visit her yeah postpartum. yeah I think it's a really important question because I think a lot of the time birth trauma is very much swept under the rug um, dismissed and not acknowledged um, and my most hated phrase um, in the work that I do is this idea of all that matters is a that you have your healthy baby um, or at least, you know, you're both okay at the end of it. And it's just not, it's not okay to dismiss a woman's experience when, you know, your birthing day stays with you for the rest of your life. And if it is a traumatic experience, it has a huge impact on your transition into motherhood, your ability to bond with your baby, your relationships, your physical body and your recovery. It can impact future birth experiences. Um, it can impact your mental health and well-being significantly. And so I think the first important step is really honoring the the enormity of a woman's birth experience, not assuming that it's been a positive experience. I think a lot of people go in very excited when they're meeting the new baby and they're seeing mum postpartum and, you know, might just, you know, I guess say, say things around how amazing this must be for her when really she might be feeling quite broken, detached, alone, 
you know, still feeling quite anxious or fearful about what she's just been through. So I think going in with a lot of sensitivity and awareness that she might not be okay and um, not making assumptions about how the birth went or how she might be feeling in that postpartum period. And that's so important to acknowledge, isn't it? Because birth can be so amazing and beautiful and empowering, mm-hmm. um, but it, it, there are aspects where it's quite confronting that you could be potentially naked and there's a whole lot of people mm-hmm. that run in the room once you've had your baby and, and those sort of things might seem like, I guess I'm looking for the word dismissed by someone going, oh, well, that's just part of it. Mm -hmm. And it could have been that that was traumatic for her. It might be the actual birthing and laboring was beautiful and and fine. And then it was how she was treated post the birth of her baby. It's not a matter of when the experience happened for her. It's that it did happen. Yeah, and I think a really important point there is that it's a woman's perception of her experience. So, you know, it's not for anybody else to judge or decide whether that's traumatic. When a woman's in labor, it's a really vulnerable experience. And so I've worked with women with birth trauma who recall quite strongly a moment in their labor where a a care provider made one comment or even looked at them a certain way or, um, you know, dismissed one moment of their experience. And that's the thing that sticks in their mind. And that was the traumatic component. And from an outsider perspective, maybe that's not a huge thing, or like you said, you know, birth and, you know, birth trauma is quite normalized in our society or like you're expected to go through this painful traumatic birth. So you just need to get on with it. Um, but these, you know, sometimes small moments or big moments that, um, are traumatic for a woman are valid and true for her. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that, um, in the process. So what would be some, tips I guess you could say for the woman herself Mm -hmm. to start the processing of this it's it's a really big question because it's not something that is easy to overcome um but I think in those early days and early weeks um a really important component is calming your nervous system and feeling safe again. And so really allowing yourself time to rest, to receive support and nurturing and safety and comfort from those around you and not rushing back to, and this applies for all women postpartum, but particularly after birth trauma, not rushing back to um, getting on with things or feeling like you have to be okay. Um, It's okay to not be okay. And just going really gently with yourself and making space for those emotions, um, giving yourself permission to cry, but really thinking about what is it that's going to make me feel safe again. And that might be curling up in bed with your favorite blanket. It might be newborn cuddles with your baby. It might be support from your partner. There's, you know, such a range of things that you could be implementing or integrating into those first few weeks that are all about honoring where you're at and nurturing yourself and healing, um, in those early, early weeks. And I really love that because it is that is so important for every woman, Mm. isn't it? You know, postpartum is not a, let's now display my baby and everybody can come by at any time that they want at Mm. any time of day. It's really about holding your own space and and being strong with that. And if you feel like you can't be strong, telling those who care most about you to be the strong ones for you, you know, setting the boundaries that you want and maybe communicating Mm. that to your loved ones and letting them also hold that space for you is really yeah like is that really protecting your postpartum space um you know it's it's such a vulnerable time again regardless of whether your birth has been positive or or 
traumatic. It's such a vulnerable space to um, be navigating motherhood for the first time with this this new baby, whether it's your first baby, second baby, third baby, it's it's a really special but vulnerable and emotional time. So protecting that space and knowing that um, you can be exactly as you are, whether that's the big hormonal shifts where you just need to cry all day or whether you, you know, are getting nude to do skin to skin or you're learning how to breastfeed for the first time really protecting um yeah protecting that time and that space and only letting people in that you feel safe and comfortable with and that also helps because you're not necessarily having to relay the story over and over so if you've got say five or four or two or however many close people yeah see them again you know, you don't have to necessarily mm. go, okay, tick, I saw that person, so they've had their turn and now it's mm. on to the next person. If you're feeling comfortable with that person, invite them back and they're going to be on it. And also if they're a supportive person, they're going to know that that's what you want and yeah, there's less hype on the baby and more on okay I'm here again what can I do here's another meal I can hold the baby you go sleep like Mm -hmm. there's all of those things that they can do yeah and I think a big part of that is really protecting your story and knowing that you don't need to share the details and actually sometimes talking about your birth trauma um too soon or not in a safe way can actually be re-traumatizing or increase your symptoms of trauma. So I think it's really important to be mindful of who you share your story with and knowing that it's okay to not, um, not open up and be vulnerable with certain people um and you know that might look like finding a perinatal psychologist or a a birth trauma counselor to do a debriefing session with and gain that support from a professional but it might also look like you have a really close friend who gets it who can hold that space and you do feel safe and want to unpack what happened with with a, a close friend or family member and if we talk about birth trauma for a previous birth you know there's a lot of women who will have had a previous birth that was had the trauma and then they're pregnant again Mm. and that level of um anxiety that that whole process Mm. will happen again in saying that and i'm sure you'll touch on this there's that healing birth you know yeah like a lot of women do feel when they have a beautiful second birth or third or whatever um Mm. that it helps them to heal can you talk a bit a bit about that yeah I think it's it's a huge process to move through your birth trauma and prepare for a subsequent pregnancy or, or subsequent birth experience but it certainly is possible so if you are pregnant after birth trauma, I would really encourage you to um, make space for reflecting on your previous birth and working on that prior to your next birth. I think sometimes we can decide to kind of put our head in the sand a bit or avoid or just not go there. Um, But in terms of setting yourself up for a positive birth the second or third time and, and really wanting that healing birth experience, a lot of work can be done in that space um, to prepare. And I think sometimes when I do birth debriefing and support women with this process, it can be really helpful and you can learn a lot from what happened last time and what you might be able to control or do differently for the next time. And that can feel quite empowering to set yourself up um, knowing how things Uh, panned out last time and what you could do differently um and yeah I guess doing that that preparation and um both emotionally and practically um to prepare for your next birth and that's where I really want to touch on that the help the services that are available and there is that that myth that a psychologist session is only when you're really really struggling and you, you know exactly as you've just said a birth debrief Mm -hmm. you know if you want to label it to be that's the session that I need and it's probably the session that you need and that with a a psychologist that a perineal 
psychologist that specializes in this Mm. like yourself it's so so important we'll make sure that we put some resources below this and um, with the show notes but are there any other things or resources that you want to share um, I think, uh, you know, like you said, Kez, just really encouraging women to know that it's okay to receive this support um, and you don't need to be at breaking point to reach out for it, whether it's just after birth or in your kind of first year postpartum or whether it's years down the track. Like I said, your birth experience does stay with you forever and you know, there might be a time where you do want to process it or reflect on how that's showing up in your mothering experience or how that impacted your early motherhood journey. Um, And of course, you know, all the other challenges that we experience in motherhood, just that reminder that you are worthy of meeting your needs and receiving this support. Um, So reach out for, for it if you need, need somebody to talk to so amazing thank you so much for for your time today and that that is invaluable resources for the women and the carers and the support people that need to hear it yeah my pleasure thanks for having me how amazing is Beck? that was so beautiful and hopefully something that's helpful for you share this share this with your loved ones share this with anybody who comes in contact with a a pregnant mama or a a postpartum mama because everybody needs to hear this. Head out over to pregactive.com for the show notes.